Greetings everyone, this is Pastor Alan Baggett and this is our Sunday morning online message. So glad to be here with you guys today. Uh, exciting things, we're, I mean, we're getting so close to going into the new building and we're actually filming it once again in the new building. Then when we're finished here, we'll head over to, to the uh, 121 East Avenue location. But uh, we'll be heading over there just after this. But I'm so glad that you're here today. And, and to be here in the building, it's going, to be, it's going to be so great. And I just want to encourage everybody, the first Sunday of March, to come out and, uh, and join us for an for in-person uh, live service as we dedicate the building, and as we dedicate the uh, uh, new church location, and the new focus and everything. It's going to be just a powerful time. So be in prayer with us about that. And if you can help us financially, Hey, man, that'd be so great. Just go to todaysvictory.com, uh, and you see our giving button. It'll take you to the giving module, and you can give that way. You can do monthly, weekly, re reoccurring, or you can just do a one-time gift. I just encourage you to do that. We are uh, halfway, to, well, actually a little over halfway. I hadn't counted up exactly where we're at, but we're a little over halfway to our entire goal, and we're like three Sundays out. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do. And we could really use your help uh, as we do this because the transitional costs have been quite expensive. But it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it all. You know how you do things. You, you put your budget out. You figure your budget out. And then uh, as, when you exercise your budget, you found out that uh, it's going to cost more than you, <laughs> than you thought. But God's supplying all the way. So it's a wonderful thing. And God's going to use you if you'll allow him to to help us do that. So just please do that, todaysvictory.com. You can give that way, uh, and you can mail it to us at 300 Spring Hollow Road, Goodlesville, Tennessee, 37072, and that will get to us also. And we just thank you guys for your support and uh, just excited about all the things that God is just about uh, to do, not just about, actually is, do, uh, is doing right now and, uh, and going just to manifest in a lot much greater way just in a few weeks. It's going to be great. Well, this morning, I want to bring a message leading up to that day, but I want to bring a message about the kingdom. But if you'll turn in your Bible with me this morning to the book of Matthew chapter 16, I want to read verses 18 and 19, a passage that's very familiar to you, but hopefully I'm going to bring out a truth here that, that you've not thought about. Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 and 19, and the Bible says, And I also say to you, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. As we look at this passage right here, and we began to dive a little, a little bit into the kingdom and the kingdom of God, I want to look at this very first verse, verse 18 where it says, I will build my church. I will build my church. And this word church right here is very unique and uh, is very important in how it's placed right here. And we need to bring this out to begin to understand the rest of this passage. The word church right here is the word ecclesia. And it's the first time the word ecclesia is attributed to the followers of Christ in the entire Bible. Up to this point right here, it has never been used to, to talk about the followers of Christ or the church or the Israelites or anything else. And so he speaks to Peter and he's making a proclamation and he's making a declaration to Peter and he said, you are upon this rock, you're Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church. And so he's saying, I will build my ecclesia. Now, the word ecclesia, in a literal translation, this is not shooting at a picture or, or a sub-meeting, but the literal translation of ecclesia is simply the called out ones. 
the called out ones. So when we think about church, we began to think about this building that we're fixing to move into. We think about the floors we've got to finish and the chairs we're put, putting in, the walls that we're painting and all the things that we've got to put together so that we can present the message of God uh, from this place right here. And we think about this building, we think about the brick and the mortar and all the stuff around us, the steel and the girders and the, and the, uh, uh, the air conditioning and everything else and the heat that we got going on in here. But that's not the ecclesia. That's not the church. This is not what he's talking about right here. He says, hey, I will build my church. I'll build my ecclesia. I'll build my ecclesia. Now the weird thing about this is usually when you pick up a word like this and you're talking about uh, the kingdom of God, uh, the writers tend to use words that, are, that have spiritual tones. But the word ecclesia is not even close to a spiritual term. It's not even close to a spiritual term. In fact, the Romans had been using the word ecclesia for hundreds of years uh, before Christ used it right here. When Rome would be, need to send out a word to all their communities that they were over, they would gather around and go to the different villages and the different hamlets or the houses or the communities or the cities, wherever they needed to go, and they would assemble, usually in a, a common place or a town square, and they would begin to call the people out into a gathering. And that gathering was called... The ecclesia, called the ecclesia. It was the it was a called out assembly. So the ecclesia was a Roman term that they used to create a, a community to where they could speak to a bunch of people at one time and begin to give them a message that needed to be heard. And uh, but how? But I began to ask this as they go to the hamlets, as they go to the different places, they need to have an ecclesia. They need to have an assembly. We've got to bring an assembly together. And that's exactly what we do when we come to the church. It's the, it's the, it, we're coming out and gathering together in an ecclesia. It's a, it's a group of people to hear a message of something that's going to be presented, uh, presented to us. And this is what takes place right here. When we say, upon this rock, I will build my church. I'm going to build my church. I'm going to build this ecclesia, this gathering of, of, of people. But how in the world did they assemble these people? How in the world did they assemble these people? You know, back in, in, in the day of Jesus, I know this is going to be hard for you to understand, especially in the society we live in today. They didn't have Facebook. They didn't have a group text or, or an email account or, or Instagram or, or Twitter or WeMe or any of the other things that people are using right now. There weren't any telephones. There weren't any satellite feeds. There weren't any cable news channels, no radios. How in the world, how in the world did they call the assembly or how in the world did they call the ecclesia together? How in the world did they call these called out ones to come out and assemble in a certain area so that a word could be spoken to them about whatever's going on? Well, before they could have an ecclesia, they had to have a caruso. And a caruso was simply a person who would go into that village or that town or that, or that hamlet or whatever uh, place it was and they would go through all the dwellings that were around and they would go and began to cry out throughout the city, the town, the hamlet or wherever they were at and began to cry out and call people out of their homes and call people out of their workplaces and call people out of wherever they were and literally call for the called out ones to assemble in the town square or the place that is set aside for the ecclesia. That's where we get our term. If you've ever heard this term before, this is where we get our term. He's the town crier. And the towns had criers, so if an assembly needed to be made, that person's responsibility was to go out and call out the people to come to a certain place that they needed to assemble. Interestingly enough, this is exactly where we get our term preacher. The term preacher comes from the term caruso. So now we have, if we take it that way, now we have a person, a preacher, who is conveying a message 
publicly calling people out and bringing them out into a, 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 into a common area, to ecclesia, so that they can proclaim something and proclaim something, and not just proclaim something, but proclaim something with conviction. It was the job of the Crusoe. It was the job of the town crier. It was the job of the preacher to run throughout the city and began to cry out, We are going to have a meeting. You need to be there. Everybody needs to come out. We're about, we're about to have a meeting. We're all coming together. Everybody needs to come out. We're just about to have an ecclesia. And he had to do it with conviction. And he had to do it with purpose. And he had to do it with vigor and vitality. He had to give the message out to get to the people to hear so they would come and hear. This is what, we, this is what a preacher does. This is what a crier does. This is, this is what a crusoe is. To draw the people in to the ecclesia. Now during this time of Christ, there are only three reasons you'd even call an ecclesia in the first place. The first reason you'd call an ecclesia was to, to bring a message about civil uh, reform that needed to be made or a law that has changed and a referendum has taken place and people needed to know the change or the addendum to a law or a certain thing that everybody needed to understand. And they would call an ecclesia. The second thing they would do is if they, if the, if, if the, uh, if Rome or the uh, the governing authorities wanted to find a way to improve the quality of the life of their citizens and the people in that hamlet or that city or that community, they would come together and call an ecclesia. We do that. We do. We don't call it ecclesias anymore, but we call them town hall meetings. We call them all kinds of things. But we bring a we bring a, a governing body of people together with citizens, and we come into one place. This is an ecclesia, and that's another, one of the second reasons that we would would do that because we need to go over and try to improve the quality of a situation. Try to. To, uh, if there's a change in the law or, or something needs to be discussed, we call an ecclesia. That's number one and two. Number three, you'd call an ecclesia for military strategy. In other words, if you're just about to go into a fight, war's about to break out, or something's about to happen in that area of the, of the uh, dominion, then they would call an ecclesia in that area, and they would, they would count and find out who was able to fight, and who was, who was able to fight, and what kind of weapons they had, and began to make inventory of everything they had so that they can meet the challenge that was about to come. But that had to happen through a town crier. It had to happen through a caruso, and the caruso would purvey the message to the ecclesia as they brought everyone around. So they'd come in for a civil referendum. They would come in to, for, uh, uh, to go over laws and to, to, to uh, look at quality of life. We need to call military strategy into, into order. All this stuff took place in the ecclesia through a caruso or through a crier. So when a town had a decision to make, the crier would literally go out through the town and through the hamlet, through all the alleys, through everywhere, and began to holler out, knock on doors, whatever he needed to do, and says, hey, listen, I'm calling you out. I'm calling you out. You are the called out ones. I'm calling you out. You know, people all the time come up to me and say, you're a preacher. You need to call this person out. You need to call that person out and you need to you need to get on to them and you need to ring them out and you need to you need to let them know what a dirty low down uh, scum sucking alley walking commode hugging person they are and you need to you need to call them out well you know actually the actually the caruso's job wasn't to call people out to ring them out or anything like that the, that was the job of a prophet but the caruso's job the preacher's job the 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 the, the, the crier's job was to go out and call out and say, hey, I'm calling you out. Not to bring you out before everybody so, I can, so that I can embarrass you or cast you out. I'm calling you out because you are one of the called out ones. I'm calling you out of your houses. I'm calling you out of your work. I'm calling you out of your fields. I'm calling you to come and meet me now in the town square, in the place of ecclesia. I need you to come. And I need you to get this picture in your head if you can. A preacher or a crier running throughout the city, all over the place, 
running and grabbing people by the hand and grabbing them by the shoulders, walking in their houses and saying, come on, we got to go, we got to go, we go. I'm calling you out. You need to be there. There's an ecclesia taking place and something's going to happen at that ecclesia. Something's going to happen at that gathering. Something's going to happen at that meeting and it's going to change your life. There's a, something about to take place that's going to change everything around us and you need to be there. He called them out. It's the called out ones through the houses, through the workplaces, through the fields, whatever it needed to be. And today, we as the children of God, listen to me, we are Caruso's. We are criers. We need to be the ministers and the preachers, not just because I'm in a pulpit somewhere, but you just as an individual. We need to be Caruso's and go out to the world around us and begin to cry out and call people out to the place of ecclesia so they can come in and hear a word of God, so they can come to a place where they can hear what needs to be said so, so that, that change can take place in their life. So they can feel the, the moving of the Holy Spirit. So they can feel the power of God upon their life. So something can, can take place inside of them. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part. Not, not a lone ranger running out here doing my own thing anytime I want to do it. I want to come together with a group of God-fearing people, a fellowship of believers. That's why when I pray, I say, God, I thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we come together today as a fellowship of believers. Why? Because we are an ecclesia. We are a gathering. We are a group. We are a family. We come together and we are not stronger apart. We are stronger together and we come together as an ecclesia. And I come together and we come together as a great victory begins to rise up and great victory begins to take place. As great victory begins to spread out all around us, it's because we come together as an ecclesia. As a group and a fellowship of believers. What would happen in the church right now if people would get out of their way and, and go around and begin to proclaim to everybody, we're going to have a meeting. We're going to have a meeting. We used to sing a song when I was growing up. There's going to be a meeting here tonight, a meeting here tonight, a meeting on that old campground. I don't know if you remember that song, but we used to sing it. And boy, them old ladies would get up and dance all over the place. Bobby pins would be flying, man. Hair would be whipping around like horse whips and uh, be going kind of crazy, uh, rolling in the floor, just getting all kinds of crazy. Seeing we're going to have a meeting here tonight. What was taking place? It was the Crusoe out calling for an ecclesia. I've called you out today. We're having an ecclesia. We're having an ecclesia. You need to come. There's a word of God that needs to be spoken into your life because we're stronger when we come together. We're stronger when we come together. So Jesus looks over to Peter and he says, Upon this rock, I will build my church, my ecclesia. I'm calling you out. He said, Peter, I'm calling you out. Disciples that were with him that day. I'm calling you out right now. I need you to be the crier. I need you to be the caruso. I need you to, to, I, I need you to do this so that you can bring the church together and you can become the ecclesia. We need to build it upon the truth of the word. We need to build it upon this rock. I need an ecclesia. I got my caruso and now I have a crusoe. Now I need to proclaim to the ecclesia. Could you imagine if we reached out to our communities that are around us in, in Gillisville over here in White House where we're fixing to move into. If we'd come into all these areas and we would begin to be carusos. If we'd come around and begin to cry out and call people out, not call them out because we, we want to tell them what a dirty dog they are, but call them out to bring them into the ecclesia, to bring them in to the gathering, to bring them in to the house of God, to bring them in to the fellowship of believers so they can see the power of God and they can feel the power of the Holy Spirit and things can begin to shake up in their lives. Can you imagine when our lives began to turn around and people began to be healed and, and, and miracles began to take place because we're actually going out and doing and what we're supposed to be doing in the first place and calling people out and bringing people in. Can you imagine what would happen when we come together in the ecclesia and we began to be the crusoes that we're so need to be and we began to cry out and call out and we get up and instead of waiting for the devil to fight and pick a fight with us, we pick a fight with the devil and we kick his butt from here to New York City. Imagine what would happen if we became the church. And not just an organization, not just a denomination, but we become the ecclesia that is 
full of Crusoes that are calling people out from every area around, drawing them into the place of meeting, drawing them into the place of gathering so they can hear a word that will change their lives. In Matthew 16, verse 18, it says, like we read in the beginning, I will build, uh, uh, on this rock I will build my church. And then it says, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And the gates of Hades, or gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. You see, a lot of times when we read this passage right here, we get the, we get the idea of big giant iron gates uh, up that, that, that introduce us to the hell. And we see the gates of hell Right there, and there's these big old iron gates. Well, the hell doesn't have any big iron gates. Hell has a great large opening, man, because the Bible says the broad is the way to destruction. Broad is that way. So, that, so the, the gateway to hell is not barred. It's wide open. It's, it's, it's wide open. So there isn't this big iron gates walking into hell. When it's talking about gates right here, this word the gates of Hades, this word gates right here is the same word that's used when you're talking about Jerusalem and the, and the gates of the city where all the business was conducted for the city. And so basically what he's saying right here, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's in the gates, it's underneath the gate that proclamations are made and declarations are made and judgments are made and accusations are made and things are proclaimed for you or things are proclaimed against you. Business transactions take place at the city gates. Deliberation takes place at the city gates. Matters of great concern take place at the, uh, at, at the city gate. So when you say the gates of hell right now, you're talking about the place where decisions are made, accusations are made, judgments are made, proclamations are made, uh, business is made, uh, de deliberation, a matter of concerns, all these things are made. And it's, and it's saying right here, at the gates of Hades, and at the gates of Hades, at, the, at this gate, Hades cannot prevail. What's it saying? It says that, that, that hell cannot prevail against the judgment that is made and the proclamation that is made at the gates of hell when the ecclesia comes in and the crier comes in and the presence of God shows up. It means there is not a judgment that can be made. There is not an accusation that can be proclaimed even at the gates of hell that can overcome the ecclesia, that can overcome the church and the fellowship of believers. Why do you think I continually encourage you to stay tight with the fellowship of believers and stay tight with your church family? It's because when the enemy can isolate you, why do you think there's such a great move to isolate everybody? Because when you're isolated and you can't go anywhere and you're isolated and you can't do anything and you can't, you can't have friends over, you can't have family over, you can't do nothing. Why? Because when you're isolated, you're easy pickings. The enemy can pick you off much easier when you're isolated than when you're than when you bind together. That's why, I'm telling you right now, that's why churches need to be closed down, but you can go to Walmart and, and, or, or, or this, this uh, family gathering has to be shut down, but you can go eat at a restaurant and, and you can't have a family reunion. You can't have Christmas together. You can't have Thanksgiving together. We all got to stay apart. We got all got to stay apart, but you can still go to Walmart. You can still go to Home Depot. You can still go to all these places, but that's all right. But, you, but because you don't really know anybody in there, but you, you can't come together with people you know and people you love because when you come together with people you know and you love and you begin to rebuild that bond, you become stronger. When you are isolated, you become easy pickings and it's easy for the devil and the enemy to pick you off and to control you. And so that's why, I tell you, that's why I tell you to be tight with your family. With not just your family, with your church family. Get, come to know the people that you're in the church family with. Don't, don't leave the fellowship. Begin, begin to dig into the fellowship because we're stronger together. And the enemy knows that if he can ever separate you, isolate you for any reason, what it may be, it may be an offense, it may be a disagreement, it could be unforgiveness, it could be all kinds of things. But if he can ever isolate you, he's got you. The enemy knows that when a crier calls for the ecclesia, that hell doesn't have a chance. 
The devil knows that, that if you start getting faithful to the house of God again, you're going to start living right. You're going to start thinking right. You're going to start doing right. And he's going to do everything he can to keep you out of the house of God. Not because the house of God saves you, but it's because the gathering of the believers and the ecclesia as the Crusoe begins to cry out, it speaks into your life and makes you stronger. And, you, and, you don't, and you're not such an easy target all about by yourself. All of a sudden, there's a group of powerful people that are behind you that are supporting you, that are behind you. And the enemy knows that. So the enemy knows that when the crier calls to the ecclesia, that hell doesn't have a chance. And he's doing everything he can to keep you out of the house of God. He'll use fear, intimidation. He'll use sickness and disease, whatever he can do to keep you isolated. You see, the devil knows this. He's not dumb. The devil knows that the kingdom is more than just you. He understands that it is the ecclesia. What you've got to do is you need to understand what the devil has already understood is that you're a part of the ecclesia. You're a part of the, the fellowship of believers. You're part of a greater whole. You need to begin to understand and quit believing the lie. You are not alone. And if you are not alone and you have a fellowship of believers and an ecclesia around you that wants to be a part of you, it wants to love you, it wants to help you, it wants to reach out to you, why in the world would you choose to separate and choose to be alone and choose to live in your misery and choose to live in all your mess and all your junk when you have a family who can love you? It's a lie from the enemy. If Christ were here standing with me today, and He is in spirit through the Holy Spirit, He would look at you and say, I don't know why you need to come back to the house of God. You need to, you need to go back to church. You need to go back to the ecclesia. You need to go come back to the gathering because all of your accusers, all this fear, all this junk that's being proclaimed against you at the gates of hell, they have no power over you because I am with you. You are not alone. Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. I used this passage just a few weeks ago. And you being dead in your trespass and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He has made alive together with Him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. All of them. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. What's the, what's the idea taking place right here? The idea here is that the accuser at the gates of hell is writing proclamations against you continually on the walls of, your, on the, walls of the gates of, of hell, making proclamations and making declarations and making accusations against you that wall is actually covered with your sins it's covered with your bad choices it's covered with your shortcomings it's covered with your bad decisions it's covered with all of your failures but through the cross all those proclamations are erased and the gates of hell cannot stand against you but you can't accomplish that by yourself Upon this rock I will build my what? My ecclesia. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This is not a scripture that speaks to the individuality. It's a scripture that speaks to the community. It speaks to the community of believers. In other words, for that to work, He'll forgive you and He'll... And he'll wipe, that, he'll wipe all those proclamations away. But if you want to be able to live in strength, to even get to that point, you need to be a part of the community. And not just a lone ranger running around doing your own thing, your own way, your own time. You need to be a part of the ecclesia. You see, this is a picture of Christ reaching out from Calvary's cross with His broken and bruised and bloody body, wiping with His precious blood every, every proclamation and condemnation against you, and where the blood is applied, I promise you, all is gone. All is gone. So what are you trying to tell me, preacher? I want you to listen to me. You can make it. I don't care how bad the circumstances are around you. You can make it. Your accusers 
have already failed. The power they have over you has already been broken and taken away. The only power that your enemy have over you, the only power that your anxiety has over you, the only power that your fear has over you is the power that you allow it to have. It's already been defeated. It's already been nailed to the cross. Your enemy and your, and your accuser at the very gates of hell has already been disarmed and made a public spectacle already. It's already been done. And because the accuser has been disarmed, and because your fear has already been conquered, and because your anxiety has already been removed, you have already overcome the world. You just have to realize it. And then you have to begin to live like it. You see, what I'm doing today, I'm talking about the kingdom. The first part of the kingdom I'm talking about is the ecclesia and the position of the caruso and the crier. And for some of you guys, you've allowed the enemy to rob you and steal from you because you have divorced yourself and separated yourself from the fellowship of believers and from the community of, of like-minded thought and people and isolated yourself and life is hard and life is difficult and you don't know what to do, I'm calling you out. Not to jump on you. Not to ring you out. Not to throw condemnation on you, but I'm calling you out of your houses. I'm calling you out of your places of work. I'm calling you out of your isolated areas that you have isolated yourself in. And I'm calling you back into the fellowship of believers. But Pastor Allen, i got to keep, keep six foot apart. I don't care. Keep six foot apart. Keep ten foot apart. Keep fifteen foot apart. I don't care. I'm just telling you right now, even if you can't show up into this house for some reason, that you need to reconnect with the fellowship of believers. Thank God for our, our social medias that we can still stay connected with. Even though I don't agree with a lot of their stances right now, but... But thank God we still have avenues that we can stay together when we're not even together. But I'm telling you right now, you need, I'm calling you out right now. You need to come back into the fellowship of believers and quit isolating yourself. You need to come back and begin to fellowship with like-minded people. You need to have a conversation. You don't need to just be sitting there staring at the walls and binging on Netflix and Amazon series that, you, that probably aren't good for you to watch in the first place. You need to come together with a fellowship of believers. And I'm calling you out right now. It's time to come back to the ecclesia. It's time to come back to church. It's time to stop being alone and living in fear. Because you've already overcome that if you'll just re realize it. You are not alone if you'll just realize it. There's a fellowship of Bible believers that want to love you, that want to reach out to you. Not just mine. I'm not saying just come back, everybody come to my church. I'm, I'm listen, uh, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, wherever you attend, you need to get back into fellowship. Because there's strength. There's strength. There's strength when we come together. There's victory when we come together. There's power when we come together. Amen. I want to pray with you this morning. I just want you to, to join with me right now. I'm going to ask some of you guys to, to step out and do some things that you hadn't done for a year. You realize you've been locked down for a year. I'm going to ask you to begin to do some things that you've not done, done in a long time. And that's to reconnect with the fellowship of believers. You say, Pastor, I'm not physically able. Well, then you, you find a way to reconnect. I understand some people are physically unable. But find a way to reconnect. You've got to be part of the ecclesia. I'm the crier today. I'm the crusoe. And I'm calling you out. Come out and gather with us so that we can proclaim the Word of God and we can proclaim what He has for you in your life. Amen. Join with me in prayer. Father, I just thank You for Your goodness and Your grace. Father, your mercy as you've shown to our life. I thank you, Father, that we've already overcome. I thank you, Father, that 
that you are calling people out right now, not to condemn them, Father, but call them, them back out to a fellowship of believers. Because they've been isolated, because they felt like they needed to separate themselves, Father, they're beginning to believe all the things that have been written on the wall and the accusations against them. And they're feeling alone. They're feeling fear and the anxieties of, of loneliness and separation. But Father, I ask you to reach out to them right now. And I call them out of their places of hiding. I call them out of their places of condemnation. I call them, Father, out of their places of accusation. And I call them back to the ecclesia that can hear your word, Father. Let them know right now that they're not alone. You are with them. You'll never leave them. You'll never forsake them. And there's a firm body of fellowship of believers that want to uphold them and help them and walk with them and be strong with them. And Father, let that speak to every heart that's listening today, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for listening today. God bless you guys. And listen. I'm calling you out. Get out. Come back to the house of God. Find a way to connect with your fellowship of believers. Do not remain isolated. You need to come to the ecclesia. The Crusoe's talking to you today. <laughs> Amen. The crier, the preacher, calling you out. Let's get back to the house of God. Amen. Well, thank you guys. Listen, if you want to help us in our transitional cost, just my last thing here, uh, please do. Go to todaysvictory.com. You can give right there. Or you can mail it to us at 300 Spring Hollow Road, Gillisville, Tennessee, 37072. And if you'll do that, it'll help us out a lot. I would say looking at our stuff right now, we're probably around $8,000 that we still need. Uh, so we're about 1000 down from where we were last week. So that's good. But just if you can, reach out to help. We just appreciate it so much as we're going in and Less than three, uh, yeah, three weeks, I guess. It's something like that. Well, March 7th. I mean, it's right around the corner. So uh, uh, please help us out if you can. And we look forward to seeing you. And if you're on here watching, if you're able to get to our service, it's going to start in just in a few minutes. Uh, I invite you out to the 121 East Avenue uh, building because that's where we're going to be at today. And come join us for in person and, uh, and be part of that ecclesia. Be a part of that gathering. Amen. Let God speak in your life. God bless you guys, and I will see you Wednesday night. Hallelujah.